Bap, bap, bap. Oh, hello, Jim Norton, the great, brilliant Jim Norton, the great Jim Norton and his wife, Nikki, are on the show today. They're hilarious. They talk about their transgender love, their trans union. You're going to love it. He's brilliant. It's hilarious. She's just a real Disney princess. I mean, I, I, she is a, the only feminine, true feminist <laughs> I've ever met. She's like, I don't cook. I don't clean. I take baths all day and I go to Saks. Like, I love this bitch. Um, uh, before Jim and Nikki, I want you to know that I will be in Erie, Pennsylvania at the Warner Theater June 28th, 2024. Come on out. All new material. Then I'll be in Las Vegas. Yes. July singing. I'm a singer now. <laughs> <laughs> July 6, 2024 at the Mirage. And then July 17th, coming to Canada, Edmonton, Alberta. Why does Canada's city always have so many names? The Great Outdoors Comedy Festival. I'll be there with Bert Kreischer. Come see us. Also, I have a new special out. It's my sixth stand-up special. It's called Mouthy. It is on of.tv slash Whitney. It's the OnlyFans TV side. Uncensored comedy. There's no nudity. Your wife's not going to divorce you. You're not going to lose custody of your kids. If you go watch it, it's a totally different site. OF.TV slash Whitney. Enjoy that. Now enjoy Jim Norton and his trans wife. Big news. Jim Norton's married. It's also embarrassing. That's a very embarrassing yes. thumbnail. But it's kind of a it's a, it's kind of a goof. We're You're making doing fun the of most. Yeah. You are doing the most. Yes. But we know... I know, I kind of know who you're making fun of in a way. Yeah. <laughs> like, I go like, ah, <laughs> I know the annoying people that I feel like this is mocking. That's how I normally see his face. <laughs> but <laughs> And we're off. <laughs> oh my God, if I give birth this episode, I'll be so mad at you. Um, but uh, <laughs> I know you're used to getting peed on or used to getting... Uh, after births on? <laughs> no, no, no. And thank God I'll never What's have that. that. <laughs> what is that, a turd? Have you ever had water broken on your face? <laughs> no. It's a, one thing I haven't fetishized is pregnancy. It's the only thing. <laughs> you know what is interesting? I've had more guys ask me out than in my really? whole life. When you were pregnant? Now. Oh, yes. wow. Is that weird? That's so weird. I don't get it. Is it because I can't get pregnant? I don't know. This is, part, is that part of our appeal? Right now, I mean, I wouldn't know. I can't get pregnant. <laughs> Only in Jim's mouth. All right. In, okay, in LA, I think you might be able. I Maybe. Mean, if you say that out loud, you might get canceled. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you can't, and you're right. In Norway, is there as much bull about this? You know, it's actually, like, nationally, it's like, if you're transgender, it's kind of like you need a diagnosis. You have to go to the one hospital in Norway, okay. which is called the National Hospital. So it doesn't matter where you're from in the country. If you're transgender, you've got to go there to legally start the process with hormones okay. and therapists and psychologists. But honestly, I thought it was great for me because I went there when I was like 14, 15. Uh -huh. And it was a long road, like two year process to get me on everything. Yeah. But it's like, I do think it is the right thing to do because right. I'm obviously not 110% normal. Like, there's definitely something different going on in the brain and, you know, physically. And under the skirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's very weird. Like, when I came here, I noticed that a lot of people, like, in here in the States, it's not like that at all. You know, mm -hmm. you can see a doctor and right. you can start hormones. But in Norway, you got to have a diagnosis. Okay. It's called transgenderism. Okay. So diagnosis F.64.0 or something. I don't think I know what the process is here. You just have to be born in yeah. Los Angeles to a famous actress. Yeah. <laughs> and just say it. And I, like, yeah, yeah. I think you have to be adopted from Africa by a single famous person. I don't know. And by the way, that's not the big news is not that we're married. Like, I know that that sounds like we're we're starting a YouTube page. And that's yeah. kind of a joke. That's like the first five well, minute promo video. Starting I don't people... a YouTube page together is way more commitment than getting married. I think so, too. Aww. It's so weird to see myself on like Instagram and social media because I was off the grid for literally five years yeah so now that i'm back on it's like i met jim when i was 19 wild i'm 26 now mm -hmm. it's so weird that just now like three weeks ago we're public mm -hmm. but we've been together for so long yeah and then can i ask you like to see a comedian in love it makes me hopeful it makes me um a lot of things because i always am like are we unlovable because of all the stuff that we have said mm -hmm. it like put out there you know right. i'm like is any man ever going to want to sign up for that google me one time and they'll just never get an erection again <laughs> so it's like you know did you were you nervous after you saw all of his specials no not at all like kind of like i remember going to one of jim's first shows this was in canada 
and one of his friends. So he was on stage. It was a big thing for Just for Laughs. And I just kind of, as a foreign Norwegian, didn't really get get it. So one yeah. of his friends Some go, Americans don't get it. Your yeah. girlfriend. <laughs> a lot of people don't get it. <laughs> one of his friends goes, your girlfriend. She didn't laugh at all. She was just sitting there. Yeah, he goes, it, and it, I just didn't get the jokes. So he, I'm now I kind of get them a little more. That's how you two are. You're like, no, oh. these are just true statements. She's very literal, though. She never gets my jokes. I'm like, how did you marry a comedian? I think that's she a never Norwegian laughs. thing. She just kind of looks at me like a robot. It's psychotic. And that's awesome. And also, that's such a comedian thing. If I'm performing for 5,000 people and there's a guy in the front row not laughing, mm -hmm. I'm like, what are you doing later? <laughs> you don't think I'm funny? We're going to get along great. That's how it is. I, yeah. I was killing, and I just saw one stoic blonde face. And I'm like, get a ring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that guy, I didn't know that guy that well. He's a comic. Mm. And he goes, yeah, it was great. He goes, that blonde, she didn't laugh once. I'm like, yeah, I know. I, I get it. Yeah. She has good I taste still don't. <laughs> <laughs> but like, do, were you like, I mean, you know, like as being a fan of Jim for so long, like yeah. the bravery of being able to sort of like, you know, talk about things most people would You know, it's secret. kind of like I watched Jim and the fact that he would just talk about transgender people in general, you know, it was... For me to see that, it was eye-opening because literally like 10 years ago, I could never imagine myself even sitting here or being with friends of a man that I'm married to. Like, yeah. do you understand? I would never, ever imagine that 10 years ago. Never. So it's weird. Because you felt like you were being kept like a secret kind of? Well, I always kind of planned for my life to be behind closed doors in a way. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's changed so fast. Yeah. Like when I started out 10 years ago and it's just 10 years ago. Yeah. But it wasn't like the way it is now. Mm -hmm. You know, when I told my mom, she's like, oh, you're a cross dresser, a transvestite. Like people uh -huh. don't, didn't have the understanding of, of how they do now compared to back then. Did you have someone that you looked to that you were, that was in pop no, culture? No, like literally when I started YouTubing and Googling, the only thing that I found online was these lady boys. I Googled Amazon like documentaries. I'm just like trying to get smarter before I have a kid. And I'm just Googling like <laughs> documentary. And I always end up just watching like another Jeffrey Dahmer one. But <laughs> there's one on Amazon. It's just called Lady Boys of Thailand. Mm. Lady Boys and the men who love them. I'm like, this is wild. Oh, <laughs> Jim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing that I saw online where these lady boys and hormones. I just wanted to get in my hormones. I was like, clock is ticking. But then I realized I have to go to the National Hospital in Norway. So I did. Uh -huh. and, but the information back then was just, to me at least in Norway, just none. Was there like anything in the zeitgeist like drag or like were there any TV shows that got to Norway? I, that... I never saw anything of that. Like Eddie Izzard. I'm trying to think of like. Yeah, or Amanda Lepore. Don't you, you like You can her? even look at. I mean, I do. China I... Doll. I remember like Jeffree Star was in Hulk like, Hogan. The one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I don't Gene know. Simmons. I literally had no one to refer myself yeah. to, so it's it's weird. And then you guys start dating like long distance. Yeah, we talked for. Here's the reason we're married now is because when we first started talking. Because you're madly in love. I, I mean, Aww. that would be the, I guess. <laughs> but it, it was more like I wasn't going to lose this battle. I'm like, <laughs> it was a five year long road and we started yes. talking at the very end of 2016 mm -hmm. and i didn't meet her until may of 2017 so we were we were talking for seven months before we were face like on to the face. phone on the phone facetime face every single day he would facetime me yeah. skype me and we, I, I only booked gigs in Norway. I, I was literally would rather you pee on me than FaceTime. Uh, well, <laughs> well, they're not mutually exclusive. This is, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys are like connecting emotionally. Yeah, yes. it forced me to like, you didn't know Nikki as a person. And Bill Burr was always on me. He's like, dude, you got to go overseas. And I would never do it. But I'm like, F it, I'm going to book gigs. I'll book Oslo. I'll book Antwerp. I'll book uh, yeah, that's why I first Amsterdam. Met Jim was in Oslo when oh. he did his European tour. And while he was on it, he was going to Amsterdam like a week after Norway. Yeah. Um, and he was going to fly me out and I missed my flight. But then the next day you got me another flight. Yeah. So you, you hadn't fully transitioned by then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're still missing flights, were we? <laughs> Needed a couple more hormones. <laughs> but that's fascinating to me, I think, because like I do feel like long distance sometimes helps us not overdose on each other yep. and not sort of like get so sexually uh, it, it was attached. It was a bizarre time. It was a crazy time. It was crazy. Life was just difficult. It's I Back we have respect. something in Norway called the Enteloven. It basically means you're not to believe you're special than anyone else. Right. We're all equal. We're all the same. And honestly, I call bullshit. You should feel special. Yeah. You should feel a little special, a little coddled. You and know like what I, I mean? heard about this, like in um in businesses over there, like the boss dresses the same as the intern. Like oh. you're not wearing a nice suit if you're the boss. The oh. idea is never to stand out. Yes. No tall poppy syndrome type a of thing. Absolutely. 
Is that, I mean, it doesn't really encourage, I guess, competition or anything, but I guess if you're getting paid by the government and pay that much taxes, why would you need to do that? It hasn't translated into our marriage. Don't feel better than other people. <laughs> Believe me. I would love it. She found Macy's and she's like, I love Macy's. I'm like, every f***ing husband wants to hear I no love Macy's. Macy's. No, no more Macy's. No more Macy's. I yeah. love it. It's great. I'm living the life. First, when I came here, I was like, oh, Macy's is beautiful. And then I discovered Saks. And Bergdorf, <laughs> and we share credit. It's yeah, you got to go back on tour, Jen. I love I being know. married. We I got, know. We got to get this YouTube channel up and running. I, I gave her a credit card. Like I, I can't oh. believe my life is here. I'm a married man. Sometimes I'll say those words. I'm married, mm -hmm. and it just it doesn't feel like, and it, it's not real. It doesn't feel real that I've been married for well over a year. Jim is really the sweetest person ever. This like, is correct. We it's... this is we all do know this, but I'm curious like what changes? Like the day you get married, what is there like a relief? Is there like a ah, oh, I feel this unconditional love? Is there a oh, now it's the countdown to when he murders you cuz this is when it starts. <laughs> it's okay. it's, the, it's that you can't leave. Like when we fight, even if we have a bad argument, mm -hmm. I know I'm walking out the door or this is not an option. Like, mm. I know that we have to resolve it. Um, but you also feel like, I, I'm so grateful she's in the house. We have been married for so long house. that whenever we argue now, I'm like, our union can't f take this. She does that to annoy me. So she says fucking, our union, no. I hate Stop it. Stop with that shit because the union- See how she points? No one likes is, that. I don't like that when we argue. <laughs> that is so fat because I do have this new thing in fights where you go like, are we going to break up? If not, this is going to go differently. Maybe we can just be silly about it. Like, we're not going to break up, right? This is right. like a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. So why go scorched earth? Like, why try yeah. to hurt each other? Because I'm going to have to see you in a couple hours, you know? Right. But I do think for me, the longest time, my leverage was like, well, I'm out of here. Yeah. Like, I'm leaving, you know? And that was like just such a cowardly thing to do. Like, I'm into the marriage thing. There's like such a like like a bravery to it. I think now more than ever, the more people are like, oh, we're getting married, like half of them. And like, that makes me want to do it kind of even more because yeah. it's kind of just like punk rock. I love it. I mean, I, I can't believe I'm saying that and actually meaning it, but I really love being married. Yeah. Like, I don't want anything else. This I is it. I love not having a job and being a housewife too. <laughs> yeah, we look at it for I different. Mean, no, but I have to say, I've never had a job. And no, literally, I've never had a job. I'm not trying to make myself this person of weird spectacle but I've never had a job and I love living with Jim. No, He's a very manic person. So whenever he gets home from radio, I love waking up early now. Yeah, yeah. Which I never did before, but he right. has a schedule now. So when he wakes up and go to work, the first thing I do, wake up, have the apartment to myself. Coffee, you know, just relax, <laughs> do all that shit. But when he comes home, the radio voice is still on and it drives me f***ing crazy. Cause he's like, Nikki, and it's just so loud and crazy. And I've had a nice morning, yoga. I do a bath every morning, bubble bath, waterworks. I love it. I, but this you, is feminism. But do you way. see the dynamics? I love being married. I never thought feminism. I'd love it so much. No, because I love having the apartment to myself. No, but you know That's what? That's what marriage is. I went through some shit and I've learned to wholeheartedly prioritize myself first. Yeah. And being with Jim, it's easy because yeah. I have the freedom. You yes. Know? I love feminism. This, this is feminism. It's feminism. Dude. Dude. Yes. The, this trans women are the only women that are actually women. I'm a oh. bull dyke. Look at me working 24 hours a day. Like I yeah, love, she's 1951. I, I love that song can that you, goes. Can you help me transition into being a woman? Oh, you. Uh, <laughs> can I go to that place in Norway? We can both dress up and listen to uh, "You'll Be a Woman Soon." <laughs> <laughs> you know that song? Yes. Uh, that, that and just look at ourselves in a mirror, lipstick. <laughs> Man, do you, I feel like a woman. Do you know those posters from the 50s where they'll show like the husband? works and the wife is making eggs yeah. she uh, loves that that's she's I literally very be 19, a 1960s old school. housewife i'm into that too now Love now it. that i feel like i've accomplished a lot of my goals that's my kink entirely yeah. but also it's like what is this thing where it's like cooking and cleaning and women in the kitchen and that's back it's like you're using knives and fire yeah and providing <laughs> for your man oh, like why is he that? is the worst i was at home i wanted to learn to bake i can make food but i'm not the best cake baker and he gets so mad because he's in a diet. Stop pointing. You're gonna poke me. <laughs> and, she and does he, that. I hate he, it. She does he, this. And he <laughs> yell. And he yells at me. I'm tr I'm fat. I'm trying to lose weight. Can you take that f***ing pan off the table? And it's just because I am fat. And I I, I know I put on twenty pounds. I know I'm a pig. Is that from being married? Yeah, yeah it is. Because she's skinny bit. and can eat whatever she wants. I have and she wants me to off die. Burns calories. Getting married. <laughs> I know, but I eat while I jerk off. <laughs> I jerk off to the cake I'm holding. That's the problem. <laughs> this fucking cake is delicious. It really offsets any weight loss. <laughs> 
But uh, getting fat, she can eat whatever she wants. So it's like she'll have treats and snacks and cookies and all that, and it doesn't I, affect her at I all. I have never complained about how Jim looks. She doesn't I've no. never told him, look, you have to change. You gotta no. go to the gym. Mm. I never tell him that. Never. She wants she's like, but Oh, you he look he tells cute. me to change all the time. Oh, let's go. Yeah. He'd be healthy, eat a little, a little better. Yeah, I want her to be healthy. Not I don't say lose weight, but, but I'm like I'm for not your heart. unhealthy. If I have a cookie, I'm not healthy. Well, that's just love. I think when you love someone, I think for like people like us, like, you know, we didn't, I didn't receive love in a healthy way. Yeah. I didn't have parents that, you know, showed me how to take care of myself. And then sometimes when I love someone, I micromanage them. Mm. I also saw a lot of death and I'm like, yeah. don't eat that. You're, whereas I'll treat myself like, but I need you to stay alive I forever. think that's actually one of the reasons why we work well together. Cause my life was kind of like shit before or whatever. So when I met Jim, it's just, it's just like a real person, yeah. you know, who really wants the best for you. And immediately I could feel the love, like the fact that I met Jim, it was just love. There is it anger though, like when I love something and I get scared, I'm gonna lose it, or I think it's hurting itself. I'm like, what the fuck are you? Like, I don't mean for it to come out that way, yeah. but it's just like, I love you so much. And if you keep eating these cookies, I'm gonna lose you. Yeah. And I can't get back on hinge. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just like, we get, <laughs> it was so bleak before you came in. <laughs> There's just, the stakes are high. But the control, like I, and I said that to Nikki, we were fighting recently. I'm like, you know what? That was me trying to be controlling. And I, I that was me trying to control the outcome. And I can't do that. Like, and I apologize. I forget what we were fighting about, but I have to let Nikki just be herself and live how she's going to live and fuck up the same way I fuck up. But like, the music has to go. Which music? Hers? It's It, it literally is something. Hitler would have tap danced to her fucking playlist. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> this, is, I, this is, it is like like Hannibal Lecter's, like the music. It's you crazy. Have, have you heard? Some? Yo, I've heard yes, it. Yes, on, on the, when I, I put I it on cook, stories. I clean, I have it on in the background. I love it. But it's, what is it? Uh, what is it? It's, it's, I listen to some Norwegian songs from the 60s. What's the one, the one I 50, hate so much? Even the 40s. All, Saturday, all the... What's There's that? one that goes Saturday all week long. Oh, Saturday all week long. How is it in Norwegian, long. though? How is it Norwegian? Lørdag hele uken lang. To all my Norwegian fans, Lørdag hele uken lang. Saturday all week long. It's horrendous. That's living with Jim. It's Saturday all the time. I Thank God I don't have bullets in my house. <laughs> yeah. the gun that I, I know, have. Believe me. Even looking it on your Instagram, I was like, God. Oh, I, I would, no, I put you don't like it. There's something about oh. it that is so joyful in saccharin. Mm. It, like it's like a parody of happiness. But it's real. I come home I, and that's what she's listening that's to. That's when they played FAO Schwartz. Yes. Like and while one of the employees is hanging. Watching old Westerns. Yes. <laughs> this show is brought to you by BetterHelp. It's the most wonderful time of the year unless you aren't in therapy, in which case it's the most triggering time of the year. This holiday season, I'm going to have a little baby, okay? The vampire will be out of my body, and I'm already getting people being like, I'm going to stop by, and I'm going to bring you stew, and I'm going to bring you this, and can I swing by and give you a gift and come meet the bear? I was, what? If I was not in therapy, I'd be saying yes all over the place to these germ-riddled weirdos that want to come see my baby while it's still wet. Okay. Thanks to therapy, I've been able to say hard pass. No, I'm not being rude about it. I'm being direct and honest. I don't want me in this little slug to be in your Instagram story. Okay. I know why you want to come see this baby. I'm not that dumb. Therapy taught me to say what you mean, mean what you say, and don't say it mean and to have boundaries. Okay. I hardly know you. If you bring me a gift, that means I now I have to wash it. I have to write you a thank you note. And no, you, you can't just come hold my baby It's just so that you've got a TikTok post. Go back to the pumpkin patch. Go to Olin Mills. Go to the Museum of Ice Cream. I don't know. Do something else for content. Don't drag me, my torn apart body, and my baby into your brand strategy, okay? Therapy has taught me to say no in a way that is not rude, to set boundaries and not feel guilt about it afterwards. You got to put your oxygen mask on first before you put it on the person next to you. Am I right? That is very true, but easier said than done. Thank you, BetterHelp, for giving us all the tools to actually do that. BetterHelp has an airline now. <laughs> they should start in a little airline where they just literally put your oxygen mask on first. We would do it in a jam up in the sky. Do it when you're not in a jam in your living room. If you're thinking of starting therapy, try 
BetterHelp. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Whitney today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Whitney. It's the holiday season. I want to talk to you about my favorite company on the planet. You know this about me. It's called Etsy. If you're like me, you are on a mission to find handcrafted, affordable gifts made by independent sellers. That's my kink. Whether you're searching for custom home pieces like cutting boards, linens, and throw pillows for your favorite holiday hosts or personalized items like purses, necklaces, and seasonal jackets for your most stylish friends and family, Etsy has it. I'm doing all my holiday shopping on Etsy. It's a gold mine, you guys. I find like the weirdest vintage animals I can find give them to my friends for their desk or their home or whatever, because everyone loves a vintage animal figurine. And if you don't, you can kindly go to hell. You will be dazzled by the visual feast of rustic stuff that heals your heart and fixes your childhood. That's what Etsy does to me. If you're new to Etsy, use the code HOLIDAY10 for 10% off your first purchase. That's code HOLIDAY10. One O maximum discount value of $50 expires December 31st, 2023. See terms at etsy.com slash terms for handcrafted and affordable gifts for everyone on your list. Etsy has it shop etsy.com. I feel like, you know, when, when people talk about us or see us, they're like, think that we're this weird couple because of the situation. But honestly, I feel like we're so normal. Like anyone else, we're out with friends. You're one of the healthiest couples I've ever, <laughs> I've ever witnessed. Yeah, we're out with friends. We go to dinner. It's like we do everything that normal people do. It's why we like, because people like, when, when you're in a marriage like ours, pe- which again is very much similar to most people's marriages. Yeah, this is. But people are going to assume they know things about it. And that's why we want to put stuff out, whether it's YouTube or on Instagram. It's like if you're going to judge us, watch us, Mm -hmm. and then come to your own determination based on what you see us doing, I like these two or I hate these two, Mm -hmm. as opposed to just, oh, this is what this marriage is or this is what it's based on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. You want to have your own record of it so other people aren't telling your story and and saying what your life is and what it's about. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you have to change a little bit some of the stuff? Like, are you ever like, you know what, let's keep this part private? Like, I guess I'm like in a situation where I'm a little bit like, Moving forward in my life, are there certain, am I, am I going to be able to, is anyone going to want to date me if I air all my dirty laundry? Right. I keep, like, she loves the stuff about our relationship on stage. She's seen it. And again, she's unbreakable. Like, she yeah. laughs at it. And I know. I her. love it. She, she actually likes it because it's stuff. It's, I love it. She, if you ever go back to be a guy, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe me and you next. Yeah, <laughs> let me know. Nikki she, Cummings. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. She doesn't mind me talking about our private stuff. There's mm-hmm. certain things I wouldn't talk about, like that you wouldn't in any relationship, mm-hmm. but it feels so good to be talking about it because I'm I'm very open about my life. So when I wasn't talking about our relationship, it was torture. I, I remember fucking hated I remember it. that when he was he's like, Can we not talk about this mm-hmm. on the show? Like it really Because I feels- wanted Nikki to get in the country and I wanted mm-hmm. to make sure that if we got married, we liked it. Like we wanted to have a private life to make sure that it was a good relationship. That Jim is a little like we went to his sister's house when I first came into oh. the country and it was Christmas. So I felt special and holiday-ish and, you know, and his sister sees the ring on my finger, my engagement ring. And she asks Jim, like, are you married? And I'm like, wait, you didn't tell your fucking sister we're married? No, no, this was when we got engaged. We we had gotten engaged and I forgot to tell my family. You still say boyfriend. So let's just, yeah, yeah. (laughs) let's just take it easy. My sister saw that and she goes, are you in, you're engaged? Oh. And I was like, oh. I forgot to tell my family. Like, I just forgot. I, I did- couldn't believe it. Oh, that was an ugly ride home. <laughs> oh, my God. That was a <laughs> fucking I, ugly that ride is home. the most bro move. I, I, I know. Screamed. I know. <laughs> I cried. But by the way, I knew. Like, I knew every yes. comedian knew. Yes. You know yes. what Except, I mean? But was, your sister, like. I just forgot. Like, it wasn't. He's such a weird. Yeah. I mean, I just you're forgot. You're a weird guy sometimes. I know. When I yeah. told my parents about Nikki, we had dinner. And I told him, like, I met this girl and I told him she's transgender. And then my mate and my mother wants to know, like, are you gay? Like, she, again, it was, she, she didn't care. <laughs> but that really is the big question, though. Like, um, are you gay? Um, no. Um, no, he, I mean, I'm not straight. But you're definitely <laughs> not well, straight. I mean, I don't, when your dick is out, I don't go boo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do, but no voice comes out. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Kids but, for the people. Another one. Uh, all right. Oh, but um, 
you know, my, my parents. And how were, do you navigate that? You're just like. I don't, I, it, whatever it is. Because she's it, a straight woman. I feel like as a man, whenever there's a dick in play uh -huh. <laughs> um, and you're okay with it. Yeah. It's very hard to consider yourself heterosexual. I don't care how other people identify. Yeah. But I just think that common sense dictates if, yeah. if there's if there's any type of uh, a penis in play and you're comfortable and okay with that, it's not an act of being heterosexual so to nose dive onto two it. guys and one girl's kind of gay. What's that? I've always thought threesomes I, with two guys and a girl. It depends on if there's dick touching or or, or you know mouth. How to do dick. you miss that? How do you? I, it depends. I've seen them where there's like one on one end, one on the other end. But if they're uh, together a little bit or if but one, then they're looking right. <laughs> That's right. That's eye contact. <laughs> That's eye contact, yeah. which is even gayer than dick touching. Yeah. You know, so any man who dates a transgender can't be straight. Mm -hmm. It's just no way. Mm. It's it, I. It's, no, I, it's no hard way. to see being straight. And, are and you not, like dating women that are women just cooler, <laughs> just less sensitive and annoying? I don't like. I don't. But I don't care what it's called. Like I. Don't, it doesn't matter to me whatever it is. Yeah. Like I'm fine with it either way. Mm -hmm. If it if 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 it turns out someday someone said you're totally heterosexual, great. I wouldn't mm -hmm. believe that. But I don't care how other people look at well, it or how they the identify. That's the message, though, that the general people are trying to come across. That real woman. Like, let's not pretend you're sitting here so pregnant that yeah. we're the same person. Right, right. Because we're not. Like, I don't get period. Hello. Like, yeah. why do I have to explain that? Yeah, it's you're a trans woman and I'm a trans man. <laughs> 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 Got it. But it is, yeah. I mean, it's also interesting because it's like I have a lot of friends, you know, in L.A. that are dating guys that... Mm -hmm. wear v-necks and bracelets and they go to Coachella and they're actors and they wear makeup and I'm like you're not totally straight if you're dating him but whatever dude yeah. I'm yeah. not you know what I mean none of my business yeah. and people get so mad at you if you give an answer that is not 100% yeah. in line I need to put line. you in a box just help me put you in a box every group has their thing where if you're not 100% in line with the ideology you're an enemy mm -hmm. if you're yeah. if, if, if you question or don't check every single box mm -hmm. of the of the ideological belief you're an enemy and it's well, crazy also i can't think of anyone and who's a d lister b lister c lister i don't who's married a transgender i can't think of one person mm. i've never heard of it i've never read it mm. and you know jim does Will it smith where <laughs> <laughs> mm. I feel like i could think of a couple uh, but there's also an argument that you know i know a lot of athletes that date trans women and mm -hmm. not necessarily publicly, right, whatever. Exactly, it's still a thing that is kept behind closed doors. But the whole point, because I'm, I just did this special that's coming out this week, and I did it for OFTV, which we did the yes. roast mm -hmm. for. They're yes. doing comedy specials now, totally uncensored. I talk about trans people for like 30 minutes, and just the whole sort of thing. And um, and I asked them, I'm like, no judgment, just what's? Uh, and they're like, trans women are the only women that actually are feminine anymore. Their high yeah. heels and the skirts and, you know, they do the hair. The I makeup. think a lot of trans women are obsessed about the ultra femininity. Yes. You whereas know? like, is like, oh, we, everything. I dress like the, the kid from Stranger Things. Like, like, <laughs> like you're actually a gay pedophile if you're attracted to me, you know? And like straight men look at trans women and they're like, that's what a woman's supposed to look like. Yes. Why did you, when did you guys start wearing Crocs? But I, they, they put it in everything, their walk, their posture, the lips, they everything. They go just, for it. You yeah. really go for it and they know how to do it well, like men do. Yeah, there's like I, a hyper feminine femininity that that women that aren't trans have been like that's toxic and we like grow our armpits out now and we all you know i also think that a lot of the athletes and i can't speak for all of them or the women they date but i think a lot of them are just trying to write off the fact that they like dick too yeah i yeah. think a lot of them are trying to like pretend that that's not a reality and i mean it's we like, all know how big she male porn is like let's not pretend that uh, so many men are watching it or mm -hmm. anyone and it's like i've never seen a relationship like this where a public person has really done it. You I know? wish that I wish and it's weird that Jim, out of all people, yeah, is the one who's the liberal person in the picture. I mean, being who you are. I wish that they would just be like date who you want to date. Mm -hmm. But I I just hate the fact that it's always somebody gets caught with somebody trans. It's so yeah. annoying. Yeah. It's like just shut the up and date who you want to date. People are allowed to have private lives. I'm not saying that people should out all their private and I'm sexual. I'm sure people have private affairs with non-trans. Of non -trans course, hundred you know, percent. It. It's the idea that people just never say it, I and it's like just I own who you are. I think a lot of men love trans people mm -hmm. and the dick and all that and the balls, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> but some of these, <laughs> yeah, you don't exclude those. You're right. Because yeah. <laughs> And also, it's like <laughs> women that are, weren't well, men at one point with balls were kind of like, Whoa. yeah. But like, now you're with this woman, and you, so, a lot of these guys also like vagina. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I will never give up vagina. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Then how are you going to be in a relationship? Like they land back on the whim. You know, I yes. think a lot of guys are like that too. Yes. But I think the desire always comes back if you like it once. 
If you want to know, like there's so many, and again, I would never say people's private business. I don't believe in that. But there's so many people that I okay. know well, feel a certain. You obviously hate YouTube revenue. Well, <laughs> but I think okay. some trans uh, women creates a tingle in some of these men. And we all know. But they won't. Yes. They just none of them say it. Uh, and I wish that they said it because it would make life a lot easier for people. It wouldn't seem like such an, like a different thing if more people were like, oh, yeah, that's I like uh, I, this is who I date. That's who I date. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't seem as uncommon. And that's all. I, I just think that, you know, you're. You're hiding it and you're afraid of people going to find out. Mm-hmm. Anyone in my life who didn't accept who I was with, I would immediately remove from my life. Yeah. A- anyone, family, anyone who had a problem with it would be cut out of my life immediately. It's also weird because sex is like, you know, I'm about to reveal a lot about myself. Best case scenario, it's like a half hour a day. Oh, right. Wow. What? Yeah. What? Was that a lot or a little? Oh, my God. Yeah, we're faster. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. I, I yeah. <laughs> 30 minutes. That, that's, uh, yeah. I mean, a few pumps. Okay. <laughs> 30 minutes. Wow. It's still plenty of time think, to watch the end of Family like, Ties. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so like best case scenario. So it's like sex is like the like 2% of the time you're spe- spending yeah. with somebody. But it's thought as like the only thing that defines yeah. what you're doing, which is what wears me out with people now that like, I don't know, it's going to get me in trouble. Fine. Um, but when people are like, um, oh, so and so and this person's, we need to hire someone who's gay. And it's like, I'm not thinking about where their dick goes. Right. right. That's like exactly. such a weird thing to open with. Yeah. It's like me, she, she, her, they, there. And you're just like, I'm, I wasn't even thinking about who you, f- but it's so weird that now that has to be like the defining yeah. factor of your identity. I'm watching these pronouns and stuff. She, her, like, fine. You know, I think it's bringing the message across, but it's like, if I say that, I just feel like, what, like, why would I? I just think the whole pronoun thing is crazy. Like I went to an LGBT convention in Canada actually, cause I had no friends. So I wanted to make friends, other trans people. Mm-hmm. And it was the craziest thing. Like they're all wearing latex pants. Yeah. Pink beard. Oh. I just couldn't relate. Yeah. I'm like, this is not who this, this is on another level than what I am. This is something else, yeah. you know? But also girls, like not all girls get along. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, I, there's a lot it's of- It's the most catty, jealous, society that I've ever touched. Yeah. And I'll never go to another Welcome to like womanhood. That. It's literally, <laughs> I know that I walked in there not to come on my white horse or whatever, but I knew that I was standing out tall, blonde, whatever. Yeah, all the trans women are gonna hate you. By the way, all the non-trans women are gonna hate you. And some a group of them were laughing at me and it's just that jealousy. Mm-hmm. It's like, I was there to make friends, No, you know? No, 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 you can't. Blonde, pretty yeah. blondes don't have friends, I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> I just wanted some friends. <laughs> Hitler wouldn't have killed you? Um, oh, yes, he would have. <laughs> he would have sucked <laughs> like that. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> After he fucked you and was jealous yeah. of the fact that you had two testicles because he only had one. That is so oh, yeah. Early. yeah. But there was a there was this show on, it was National Geographic. It was called A Small Light, and it was about the Holocaust. And it's a really beautiful show. And they showed, like, what the happened with the gays uh, in the Holocaust, which we don't talk about as much. Yeah. And there were all these Nazis that would sleep with Jews to prove that they were gay or just sleep with gay people and then come back and be like, we got to kill this guy. He's gay. Yeah. And I'm just so curious how they picked the Nazis that had to, you probably wish you were in Holocaust (laughs) or did you volunteer? volunteer? Like I got like, how do you volunteer to be like, I'm going to (laughs) go. Yes. Gay ones to let you know which ones are gay, but how do then you not (laughs) veiled homosexuality that is look, I'm I'm going to, this prisoner just to see if he's gay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it turns just, out he's super gay. Yeah. I did nothing for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't care for yeah, it. He at made all. me come in 30 <laughs> seconds. So you got to burn him alive. Like, I just, like, I'm obsessed with those Nazis, the ones that had to. Like, I never heard of that. Yeah. They had to, like, I mean, sniff out the gay dudes. We were occupied by Nazi Germany. In Norway. Norway was? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, huh. so in the hometown where I'm from, there's like little bunkers. And Didn't your mom take cannons. us to see that? Yes, like where you, you all the, like where all the soldiers were fighting the Nazis yeah. from? Yeah, they got. Uh, I'm from a very small city. Uh, it's like the countryside with lots of horses. Yeah, I'm a farm girl. Originally. Yeah, they were like, let's go to where the blondes I are, n- Scandinavia. Never seen a clothing dryer before I came to the states. 
So that was, I love, I love a dryer. That was how I got it here. I just dangled dry clothes. <laughs> That's how I got her to the States. Because we like, hang them on like a wire and <laughs> married <laughs> elf. <laughs> now I only do the tumble dry. Yeah, the dryer. So I you've never seen it. a dryer before. The dryers are insane. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Yeah. I've You're never fucking, seen it's one. It's like talking to Tinkerbell, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? That was all it took to get her to the States. I'm like, I you, you want to get rid of that? fucking wire in the living room uh, you're just it's like, just easy living you just like married a disney princess it's just like such a mind fuck just like birds landing on her fingers she's drying you at your sweaty black shirt yeah <laughs> jersey mustard man yeah i have a lot of piss stain. that's oh. yeah it's kind of, i know i'm gross he I wears mean, the she, same old shirts when you came over here that was probably like the peak of what was going on with like trans drama yeah. in the zeitgeist oh. are you just like do it, i have to say being in the states like in new york especially i have not had one comment i yeah, have not had york one is... person look at me weird not it's they're not like you're taking my daughter's trophies it's yeah. it's a very very liberating feeling to walk new york mm -hmm. like compared to norway even which is legally you know great yeah but the people in norway in my opinion are much more conservative yeah so being in the state i i love being trans in the states i think it's great yeah. everyone knows what it is yeah it's not some weird did you see that they banned trans uh women from chess they did. I don't know why chess is split, I, like that. between men well, and women. Because you're basically just saying like you'd be smarter. It's so silly. Right? Like I don't. I, oh, why is chess even between men, men and women? women there should be place. one chess champion. Right. There's no mm, physical. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> sorry, hot take here. I, it's, I, 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 I can't even open the box. Pat, you gave me the chess box. I can't even figure out how to. I know. Fuck. I've been begging you. I don't even know how to yeah. open it. I mean, I think you know. It's kind of like. Men's brains, I guess, more mathematical is their point, and women's a little more. I can't win a chess game by crying and making me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> <Sure you can. laughs> I can't emotionally manipulate you into, into moving the little chips. I don't know. I see the, the chess little pieces. chips. I don't know. Did you <laughs> call the chess pieces the little chips? Oh, I was thinking of checkers. <laughs> have, but even then, <laughs> even then, they're checkers. That's in the name of the game. Is what they are. Chess. They're fucking checkers. <laughs> I thought it was the little poker chips. Oh, no, the little <laughs> chips. The they are games. checkers. Oh, so this is like the king and the queen and the horse. And sure, that, and the knight and the and bishop and the rook and the pawn. <laughs> yes, yeah, the little know, chips. A lot of chess. I do. I love it. Yeah. But I, I think that, that that's one of those things where it should just be a genderless sport because <laughs> yeah, there's no physicality to it. Yeah, it's that is mental, bizarre. Right? I think people freak out when it comes to like MMA. Like, is a is a trans woman going to punch? A, yeah. Physically, yeah. I mean, it's like you know, fighting. I would be nervous to see a woman fighting somebody trans. Just, it, it's just can we just be reasonable? You're gonna get hurt. Like, yeah, we all know the difference. Yeah, and know? then also, by the way, um, can Elliot Page win an Oscar for crying on camera? Right. You mean <laughs> is as, that an advantage? As a woman, you mean, or as, as a man? As a man transitioned to a man. Oh, I, Ellen was became Elliot, right? Ellen mm -hmm. is Elliot now. Okay, and would compete as a man in the Oscars. Yeah, but I, if you're I, a better actor, better at emoting. Oh, right. Is you know it, what I mean? Yeah. Is it kind of like... Is it kind of like a previous man playing a sport? I don't know. I, I, I It's like it's gotten so... And, and, and everybody is so invested in the answers and mm -hmm. so mad at each other for not agreeing 100% on the answers mm -hmm. that it's like, I, I don't even know what to think about half. I just, all mm -hmm. I hear is people screaming at each other mm -hmm. and everybody is like, if you don't see it 100% my way, mm -hmm. you're an absolute enemy and fuck you. I think it's also only people that have no real problems that want to fight yeah, about and this. and it's also with the hormones and stuff. Like how in America can you expect to get all these free hormones and yeah. free health care if there's nothing wrong with you? Like that doesn't make sense to me. So I actually think, you know, where I come from and you, I'm not saying it's perfect, but even in Norway, trans mm -hmm. people are saying that our system is so wrong. I don't really think it is. And let me ask you. So you went in and did you have to like talk I to therapists? In, you had to. Therap a full they group. looked at her playlist and they uh, said, yes, <laughs> <laughs> you're in. A full group of therapists. <laughs> you're also trans age. <laughs> and in, and in Norway, you can like send in a message and request all the journals and information that doctors write about you. So, of course, I did. And they're like, oh, she likes to do makeup. She has long hair, looks like a woman, comes off as a lady. Mm -hmm. So they're really like, I hear a lot of, I've seen a lot of articles in Norway where people are like, they're not giving me the help that I need. I'm a real trans person. They're saying I'm not. Mm -hmm. But I think Well, the key to being a woman is men not believing you. 
Mm. <laughs> so that means she's definitely a woman if they don't think she's a liar. Yeah. <laughs> I just think there has to be some psychology in the picture. I think it's reasonable. So like you go I, in at 14 and they're asking you questions. Asking and me you're... even sexual questions and all kinds of questions. Right. I'm just so happy that I just did this and didn't go under the knife. Right. You know what I mean? Because I don't feel like there's nothing else wrong with me physically. Right. If I want to, I can. I saw a doctor in Boston. Uh -huh. who's like a facial doctor, yeah. very recognized, very like famous. And I went there, I was so pleased because since 13, I've been wanting to see him. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and they're great and all, but I just see the cuts would be here. The cuts would be, I'm just, I'm happy that I didn't do it because I literally thought I would forever. I would, whatever Nikki wanted to do would be fine. I'm just happy that I'm comfortable in my own skin finally. You but know? I would wow. always go, I would always say, just don't, I like, you don't need anything done. You don't oh. need, but if you want to do it, like it's, it's your body, it's but don't. It's kind of the trans. There's non-trans women that do that also. That yes, kind 100%. of the tranny yeah. code. Like you have to get these things done if you want to be a real trans mm -hmm. but then i feel trans people are so different like females to males and males to females it's like day and night it's yeah so different and we don't get you know, along sometimes it's no just, one cares when yeah. it's female to male right people are like that's just smart yeah like yeah. <laughs> it's just a good idea no <laughs> it doesn't bring out the same anger for some reason you're mm -hmm. right it just doesn't i, but I it guess it didn't with lesbians neither gays lesbians were always more than gays, Accepted you mean? Oh, men. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lesbians were always easier for, for people to process than gay men. Sure, sure. sure. I mean, I, I fight with a lot of my trans girlfriends because when they're going in for another surgery and another surgery, I'm going to mm. fight with you the same way I would fight with one of my non-trans girlfriends yeah. Yeah. about getting another surgery and another surgery. Right. Going it's, like, you look gorgeous. Th th yeah. This isn't what women, your as, butt doesn't have to look like As that. a community, it's very compulsive. I yeah. feel like, like, get this done, do it, you'll love it. Or sometimes it's like, is there any like feeling of like making up for lost time? Because I think I know a lot of trans women that didn't get to transition until like their 40s and then all of a sudden they look like Betty Boop. And I like, literally <laughs> think that so, some of these girls literally literally do it cut off the bottom just to look good in a bikini and that's mm. insane or just wear jeans right right okay. just for that mm. if I, you want like if you want to get rid of it get rid of it like whatever you want is fine i don't yeah. here's the but, difference it, it, levels of transgender people right some of them want that 100 percent. some of them look down and scream in agony yeah there has to be different levels yeah totally know? but just like knowing what is gonna because like mm -hmm. doing it and then regretting it that's yeah. gonna be rough yeah. Yeah. And I don't Especially for Jim, could you imagine? Oh, divorce. <laughs> <laughs> what are Believe these me. folds? I'd wheel her out of the hospital, run into my lawyer's office. <laughs> I cannot wait to see this show. Uh, <laughs> this is my dream. It's, <laughs> it, but it, it, honestly, it's only us just being like, it's like, it's, I hate to say slice of life stuff, yeah. but it really is just pieces of our lives um, like we, you know, we went on birth. This is just an announcement. Like we both suck so much at promotion, but this was just to let people know, hey, there's a YouTube channel coming. Um, there's no the great Jim Norton, Nikki Norton mad about you is I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> oh. yeah, I hope people like it. I, I mean, yeah. I, I, uh, I really do. She's my favorite person on earth Aww. and we have, we, we genuinely you. have, I love you too. I just love we that now people will finally get to see how we communicate. And a lot of people are like, Jim Norton is just, a lot of people are just and I'm just happy that I like get comments, to see. He, but yeah. I don't read them ever. But by the Me way, oh, this, this is something we find out. Nikki is very literal and says things. Th there's never a compliment <laughs> that feels good. It's like she said to me recently, what? you know, I think you're really cute. Why do so many people say you're ugly? <laughs> <laughs> and, and she like with no irony whatsoever. No I, irony. Yeah. <laughs> She was genuinely being a loving wife. And I'm like, I don't know. Do you want me to hash this out or should I just hang myself in the fucking closet? <laughs> that was a real question. Yes, you asked me. it's like, it's so Aww. sincere and genuine. Yeah. Here's an, uh, what else did you say to me? We were watching something. I, I forget what the guy was doing. It was macho. And she went, I'm so glad you're not an alpha. I am. It's like, though. Oh. I don't want an alpha buff I, man. I know that, but I don't want to be a. I just uh, don't want that. Uh, obviously, but nobody wants to be a fat titted Jim pillow biter. Jim is very cute. <laughs> Yeah, that's just so funny because you can't be mad because you're. I know you're saying something. She nice. means it very yes, lovingly. Yes, she's like she accepts me perfectly as I am. I've never complained about Jim ever. No, no. she doesn't like. No, I hate the way I look right now. I know I look gross and fat. No, but no one thinks that, but Jim. But but literally, she's 
it, it's genuine. I know Nikki well enough, and she'll tell me, oh, you look great. I'm fine with that. And then there's a part of me that thinks, no, she wants you to have a stroke, fat boy, so she gets the no. apartment. <laughs> that would have just poisoned you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, after this next tour, maybe. We yeah. know, I, I, just once, let me just get some Once money. you get that yeah. YouTube revenue yeah. going to the Norwegian bank account. Oh, hopefully. <laughs> Two Broke Girls was in Norway. Was it? Yes. Oh, I think I knew that. Yes. I watched out when I was like nine a little. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Okay. That's one of them. <laughs> yeah. She just did it to me. Oh, yeah. Yes, without she meaning it to. She just did it to me. Uh, she I just watched that. Because when you make someone feel old when you say, I watched that when I was nine. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's like it's <laughs> brutal. <laughs> well, I think I was. Uh, do you know what it's like? <laughs> Knife when, to the heart. Do you know what it's like when I'm putting <laughs> no. out a kiss poster? And she's like, oh my God, my father would love that. He's younger than you. <laughs> yes, that was such a nice way to call me old. Oh, no. In a way that you didn't oh, even mean it. That's my oh, life. No. That's exact, It's never mean. It's always meant to be loving. But uh, yeah, she's she's great. I mean, Nikki is not... I, I One of the th reasons we work is because her sense of humor is so good. Mm -hmm. um, she is legitimately funny and she makes fun of me and she that never, she's unbreakable yeah. if I make fun of... It's like, it's, it's the way it's I... I it's very important to have irony when you're me, you know? Because if you don't... <laughs> hey, y'all. If you've not had a kid, <laughs> there's more to look forward to than you thought. You don't just have the privilege of wondering if you will perish in childbirth or if both your holes might turn into one hole. You also get to have bleeding gums every time you floss. You heard me. Every time. Thank God for Quip, which makes this genius water flosser, which has a cordless rechargeable battery that lasts up to eight hours with daily use. No bulky charging dock or tangled cords. No marauder can kill you with your own hygiene products. Thanks, Quip. That's a huge plus. This is the water flosser. It blasts away up to 99.9% .9 of plaque from treated areas with precision thanks to the 360 degree rotating magnetic floss tip that snaps right into place, easy to control water flow that leaves you feeling squeaky clean, sleek and slim enough to keep on your countertops and keep your countertops as clean as those sexy teeth. You already know, I use the toothbrush religiously. The Equip electric toothbrush is loved by over 9 million mouths. I'm not going to make a joke about what else is loved by over 9 million mouths. With stylish and affordable electric brushes starting at $25, you will not be paying through the teeth for better oral health. If you go to getquip.com slash Whitney right now, you're going to get 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, or water flosser. That's your 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, or water flosser at getquip.com slash Whitney. That's get, G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash Whitney. Quip. The Good Habits Company. So when I started podcasting, an online store was the foidest thing from my mind. Now I'm selling all kinds of things, notably my book. It is so easy to sell all because of Shopify. So if you're not a Shopify merchant, it is such a game changer. Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. It is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is where you grow, whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits or making hummus or or as insane as me and wrote a book, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce companies. You're going to sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify magic, your AI powered all-star. So I love that Shopify has this tab. It shows you all of your orders in a super clear way, the names, the cities that were ordered from, and you can directly message certain people to sort of see the tracking. You can send a mass email to all the buyers if something is delayed, or if you just want to send a special thank you for, you know, your business type of thing. It's a way to kind of like make it all manageable for like my crazy ass brain where I can't follow what's going on, make it very clear. And then you can use the data you see to amplify your business other places. Like I can, you know, go like a lot of people in Tampa bought my book. I should do a show there or open a senior frogs franchise, something. Look at me taking my business to the next level. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's and Brooklyn and, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every 
size across 175 countries. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash Whitney, all lowercase shopify.com slash Whitney. Go there now to grow your business no matter what stage you are in shopify.com slash Whitney. I never even imagined that I would be a wife ever. So I'm just loving that. I'm a wife. I wake up. I cook. I make eggs. I'm just doing all this wife stuff that is so common. And I love it. It just makes me feel like a wife. And some people would say delusional. But if it, if it is, why then I'm is living that delusional? My, why is there shame around say loving a, your man? And... Some people would say that my whole life is a delusion. You know, look at you. <laughs> but honestly, if it is, then I'm living the dream. Mm. I'm still looking for friends in my own little circle. Mm -hmm. You know, not being on a social media throughout this time very hard for me to make friends like yeah. where at the gym like no like, yeah very hard yeah so I'm still exploring that and it's gonna be so much fun I'm very excited it's such a fun <laughs> time I'm literally so, giggly all the time so cute. her friends are my friends and it's like a bunch of but old guys but I don't want to be around with another 60 year old man all the time I want to be probably with a, a better way to phrase with the it. girlies yeah. where yeah. are they come yeah. through because the people who follow me now are only gyms trucker fans <laughs> get a boob job you should get boobs and it's like that's my alt account throw some d's on that bitch yeah. Yeah. that's jim florentine <laughs> yeah. so that's where i'm at now get a boob job but yeah. you know yeah they say that sometimes uh, yeah. like i don't do jobs yeah. i was very clear i do no jobs zero kinds None. of jobs never Look had a job <laughs> i love that's my favorite thing Never had a job. No. No. I aspire. I've been a lot of things, but not a worker. No, not a worker. No. At home, I do. Clean. Yeah, at home, she I mean, it used to take and... you two and a half days to do your laundry. So I guess it's literally, only, yeah, it's oh, only they get fair. moldy. I don't fucking get, get, get it. What are some dryer. other things about America that are a delightful? Because I, I think it's, it's Americans we take for granted this great country we live in. Yeah. And so it's nice to talk to someone that. Yeah, what's. I, well, this is probably not an American thing, but. When I moved in with Jim, he had a Toto toilet, <laughs> and now the this the the seat is heated. Oh my god! So now sitting on a porcelain one feels foreign. She said that like to you somebody. Know what I mean, Nikki? Here's the, Nikki. She has no idea how arrogant she sounds sometimes. No, I know. She said, "Who did you say that to?" We're talking, and you to go, "Laura Kate." You to, said, to "Oh to my Jonathan's god!" Sitting wife. on a non-heated toilet feels foreign. I'm and like, I realized Do you understand after, how I was shitty like, that wait, sounds. Hold on. I, I realized that you've just sound. married Marie. Antoinette. I really have. Like, it's just so funny to me. Like, it's just like cracks me the up. The pomposity <laughs> that she lives in. If you came home and saw her in the bath with the fucking things on the, with zero irony, it's like, this is the life I should be having. Big periscope poking up. <laughs> <laughs> Telescope. I'm just obsessed with you. Heated toilet, like oh, I doing the it. damn thing. Steam showers. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah, she loves all, all everything. But I think Americans are really nice people like at least everyone that I've met they're just so nice yeah so cool yeah not awkward people like they're not stiff and weird and hello like they're done in yeah. Norway like oh hi it's yeah it's just fucking weird Norwegians are a little yeah, like, off. I don't want to talk to you and they don't want to talk to me neither yeah just, hello how are you it's just bye by the way it's the angriest language <laughs> it, it's it's not a pleasant language Norwegian there is but also um Norway's kind of fascinating because you guys found oil right and instead of doing oh my god what, we're literally such so a rich, rich country so, so instead rich. of doing what fucking Saudi Arabia did and just like chop a bunch we of journalists. We created a pension fund with all our oil and put it all in a trillion US dollars. I think that's pretty good for a country with five million. It's pretty cool. So it you free education, right? Yes. And free housing or and free free healthcare. education up to like college or something. Uh huh. How is it though? It's good. No, yeah. it's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. I, I love the schools in Norway. They don't mm -hmm. have shootings. If you, stuff, if you, you know. but this is if you're driving, you don't understand the fury you feel when you're driving and you hear the phone and you go, Hell, "Here's some fun facts about Norway," <laughs> and it's literally nothing but bragging about <laughs> Norway. That trillion dollar thing and how much each Norwegian says. I have heard that so many fucking times. I'm very proud to be Norwegian. She is. She loves being. But Norwegian. why is everyone so awkward? I don't know. I think it, maybe it's a Nordic thing mm -hmm. that we're very reserved. I want to go to Slarvbard. Oh my God, oh. that's an island above Norway. That's Norwegian. And in Svalbard, you always have to carry a rifle mm -hmm. because there's polar bears. There's more polar bears than people. Yeah. Yes, you need a per you need to carry one. 
I've been watching this lady on YouTube. She lives there, actually. Oh, we're so watching the same lady. I love her. <laughs> and Cecilia. something else I love about it is it. like 11 men a year die there because they're like, I don't need a gun. Yeah. Like guys will just <laughs> like, I'll yeah. be fine. One they get eaten by polar bears. By a polar bear a year ago, I think. Uh -huh, it happens oh all God. the time. And since I'm Norwegian, I can legally move to Svalbard if I apply. So, Jim, maybe we can reside with the polar bears. <laughs> her, it, it would be Do preferable comedy. sometimes. It, you know, there there are times where her level that of, is an episode for sure of the show. She'll say to me like, "I just want to like let's buy a Norwegian cabin." I'm like, "You don't understand oh, how unappealing that. that is to me." Like, no, I, I want to live in the city or LA. So I don't want to live in Norway. Half of Norwegians were five million. Half fifty percent owns a cabin. That's very important in Norwegian culture. Mm -hmm. I think Jim would love it. A Norwegian cabin, decorate. Are there a lot of murders there or no? No, I no. associate cabins. We don't have with a single ghetto. There's no gangs. Wild. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. They're nice people. You know what else Nor uh, Norway has? I always want to call it Norwegia. Um, is <laughs> the seed bank. So Yes, in yes. Svalbard. <laughs> every oh, seed. Whitney, I love you. How you know all oh, these Norwegian I'm, facts? I, there's a reason I'm single and you're not. Yes. Um, this the seed is bank. All I do. They call my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> That's my uterus. <laughs> oh, God. Bank would imply there was money involved um, for this. But uh, so so if there's a nuclear yes. war, every seed in the world yes. is in Norway. I think it's two million seeds. And it's yeah. beautiful. To like it? start. Yeah, I don't know. I, can you Very tour it? No. I, I think there's a tour. You can't go inside, though, I don't think. Are they allowed yeah. to No, there's a tour, but you can't go inside. I oh, that's like my dream. Yeah. I'm like obsessed yeah. with it. You like go all I the way down. It. We're very eco friendly and all that. I'm very like prepared. I think that's. They know some shit we don't know. Back in the days, though. we had like live fish, which we still eat, lutefisk. Ugh. Which is which is like like fish, it, lutefisk. It's like a fermented. It's or like, rotted it's, fish. It's like a cod that lays in lye and you, over the times you put salt and you have to just salt it, shock salt it, if that's an English word, mm -hmm. for like weeks and then you eat it. So I think Norwegians are good to prepare for the winters and the cold times. Yeah, yeah. Now with the oil fund, the seed vault, uh -huh. I, I see. Uh huh. The progress. I'm just fascinated by like like Norway, Sweden, Finland. They all it's like a kind of like states. I think every state in America feels a little bit like a different country. Have you been to other states in America that you're like, what the fuck is this? It's so different. It, I've, I've been on the road with Jim a couple of times and there's places where I can't even get a fucking Caesar salad. Like, yeah, uh, it's insane. Yes. Yeah, so you've and, been and to Cincinnati. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, went, we went to Cleveland. We've been to Cleveland. obviously L.A., Guilford. San Francisco, Guilford. Guilford, New Hampshire. Oh, OK. Bird show. Oh, nice. Uh, Florida. I mean, that's like going to different countries, basically. Yes. Yeah. We've been a lot. Of, we've been to, we've been to France. We've been to Iceland. We've I been. I want to go to the South sometimes. Maybe South is awesome. Yes. Have you been to Texas yet or no? No. No, not yet. Oh, you'll do great in Texas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you think they will love, love you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this really? is like Dallas. Like this is oh what they want there. Really? Yeah. I, what's Texas like? Cowboys and stuff? Texas is like very independent thinking people that are um, conservative, more conservative, a little more conservative, but yeah. also really fun. Like, yeah. like right now we're at a place in our country where the liberals are not fun anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, the liberals used to be like the free speech, the blue states used to be like the free speech people, the, you know, no censorship people. Now conservatives, they're the ones you can, I think, really go harder at in terms of comedy. And yes. That don't take themselves so seriously right. and that aren't so like committed to everything being terrible. They're not looking to punish you for every joke you tell, even if they find it offensive. That's right. Or gross. They're not trying to have your life ruined for jokes that they know are jokes. Yes. But mm -hmm. since they can't stop you for telling jokes, they pretend that there's a higher social reason to punish you for. They're not addicted to self-righteous indignation and judging people. They don't think right. they need to have an opinion about everything all the time. Yeah. So like, see behind you those cowboy boots. Like, they wear like cowboy boots. Like, I, uh, my mom grew up in Texas and uh, is from Texas, so I spent a lot of time there. It's kind of also people that are kind of like, you mind your business, I'll buy and mine. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I and they're that. kind of like, like not my business. No, just get off my lawn. If you do, I'll shoot you. But, like, I won't come on yours either. You know? It's do like, they all have guns there in Texas? Yes. yes. Is that... Because in Florida, we were just in Sarasota, and I learned that everyone carries there. 80%. Is yeah. the same in Texas? They yes. carry? Yes. 80%? Even? Oh, I don't know if it's 80%. Do you want a gun? Yes. See, th this is what bothers like. I, I would. <laughs> she's the, this is true. She's the only I have person. One, yes. And I, and I reloaded in Jim's mouth. <laughs> All right. <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, 
uh, 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 shoot up that school. There's, uh, there's, uh, I forget what I was even going to say now. <laughs> Uh, with guns. Oh, I want a gun. You're the I only... want to have it in my night drawer. No. I live in New York. I'm no. not saying that we're going to get robbed. We can't have a gun. She's the only person I've ever seen knock a bottle off a shelf in a supermarket with her elbow. I've, <laughs> I've never, never seen a person do that before. I've never driven a car. No, I know, because you're, you you bump into shit. <laughs> I've never worked. I've never driven a car. That's a, a New car. York thing, by the way. Most yeah. men in New York, they're like, I'm a New Yorker, and I know every subway system, and I know every... And they get in a car in LA, and they're just like an Asian lady. And you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's a crazy driver. He honks. He's not an easy traveler at all. Uh -huh. Flying, driving, but driving in New York, he honks like a maniac. Huh. But I'm a good driver. He is a good driver. Yeah, Thank you. I bet. But what are you worried about your safety? No, it's just watching. I'm, I'm what I'm worried about is him getting into an argument with another driver, uh, like a road rage. Yeah, I worry about that too. I'm careful with that. Okay. Um, although last we had a thing last when night. When we do Uber sometimes, and the Uber uh, driver is uh, slow, I fucking hate this. <laughs> I'll sit in the back with Jim, and he goes, "Come on, go on," and like he I, wants him to hear it, I but just, he's whispering. What's your Uber rating? Can't stomach. It's it's for something. It's pretty good. Huh. It was pretty good, which I can't understand. That's surprising. Because he'll go like this. <sighs> <laughs> we had a, we were at the Ivy last night eating dinner, and there was a loud oh. girl's birthday. Like they were, you know. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah just, but it was sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fourteen. Yeah, and the oh, okay, the, the yeah. older couple next to us, older table of people, just they were a little annoyed, and eventually the guy just snapped, screamed on I mean, top screamed, of his Shut lungs, up! literally, and the whole room went silent, silent, and and, <laughs> and the girls were just hulking. Like I, I felt like and at first I felt so bad. At first I was like, ah, well, whatever. They were being it annoying. A rift. In my but home. but I felt so bad for them when I saw these girls, that, and then like their party was ruined. Like it wasn't like they just laughed it off like I would have when I was fourteen. Yeah. Like fuck you, old man. Like yeah. they were like, uh, if I may, when I was fourteen, we went to Houston's. I never I went mean, to the Ivy. Well, like, yeah, we were we were at Cheesecake Factory. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, they were living their dream. If I'm that guy, though, that, not related to them, right? He wasn't like No, he was just some jerk off. But he here's was the annoying part, because this lady, was, was she's wearing the Chanel pearls. She's probably been to Ivy, what, 80 times? Okay. And these girls are just there having yeah. fun. If yeah, it was my first time loud. with Ivy and I was they paying. Were just, uh, they, oh, they, they, were, was... they were really, it ruined their night. And this bully jerk off wouldn't have done that if they were bikers. Like, you know what I mean? That's of what course. he screamed at. He didn't say, hey, ladies, can you keep it down a little? like, why can't I ever see you naked? I, yeah, I, 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 I hope he, exactly. I hope he got killed in an accident on the way home. I hope he fucking died. I really do. <laughs> I fucking hated him. He if a, he's drinking LA water, he will soon. I hope so. The yeah. Ivy does say, do you want tap or do you want sparkling? And you're like, tap. <laughs> That's so sad. Yeah. Yeah, but also, ugh, also, it is kind of... I don't know. When you're eating in a, a nice restaurant and people are like the woo girls, you are kind of like, do you not? There is a little bit going. It's about to have a kid. I'm kind of like, I had a con. I got pinched as a kid. If you were loud in public, you got pinched. You yeah. learned to be quiet yeah. in nice restaurants. There is this thing now where teenage girls will walk into a space and it's just for them to do TikToks. And you are kind of like, there's no respect for it. Like, you don't even know, care that but anyone is they done. offered to move these people and they didn't move. But, like, he was just one of those old jerk-offs who got... They were, and even they left right after. Of course they did. Yeah. yeah. This fucking asshole is just screaming on top of his lungs. Yeah. And the lady is like saying to the table, the restaurant should have taken care of this. And it's like, how many times I, have I, you been I, here? A hundred times. I, I, I told the just guy he was wrong on. to yell at him. I got into it with him a little bit. It but just, I realized Jim is so good at handling these situations because I'm kind of shaking, you know, and I'm feeling so terrible. I just shut up, but Jim yeah. handles it. Just I but also, so if they were like 25, that's different. That's much different. Exactly. Much They're 14. Yes. Like, these are children. Right. They were kids exactly. having a good time, and yeah. they weren't being mean. Even like, when they were loud, they go, shh. Like, they, they, they were, were trying. They were just you know? giggling and having fun, yeah. and it's a birthday. They sang happy birthday. Yeah. And this um. miserable fucking lech jerk off and his fucking <laughs> cryptic fucking shit wife. Uh, that's exactly what they were. They were fucking old, cryptic, fucking dead people. And he was a, he was a bully because yes, he, was. he wouldn't have not have yelled. That was Chuck Zito sitting there. Yeah. He would not have screamed at him like that. Of course not. And I didn't yell at he the old guy. He knew there would be no ramifications. I spoke to him, but I didn't yell at him because, again, I wouldn't yell at Chuck Zito either, so I can't yell at a 70-year-old guy. So you went up to him like right away? Or he was at the tail behind. I, five minutes, well, I, I couldn't take it anymore. When I, I saw was, those girls huddled and shut, I just got so fucking mad yeah. i just said to him i'm like i'm like you know they were annoying you're right 
But you, I'm like, you didn't have to yell at them. That was, you were wrong. And he's, well, thank you for your advice. I'm like, if that was a table full, I think I said of like rappers or whatever. I'm like, you never would have done that. And no, I know no, it and you no. know it. You wouldn't have yelled at men. Um, and then they just got up and left. left. He was a fucking jerk yeah. off. I, I literally hope he hit a fucking pole on the way home. I <laughs> <laughs> hate that guy. I, um, I do feel like it's interesting as like a forward facing person like that seemed like it would be fine. I'm always the person that is fight. Most people are freeze or flight. I'm always fight. Like I'm the person who's like when something's going on, like I always want to get involved. Yeah. And that's just, I think, part of our thing. It's, There's a, I felt that way, too. I wanted to say something really bad. Mm -hmm. but luckily, he handled yeah, it. The sister finally screamed, but Nikki, Nikki's so helpful. All these girls were like happy that we said something. And Nikki goes, it's okay. She was a C word. <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong? <laughs> I didn't. They're 14. But she said C word. She didn't actually say the word. No, so, you know, no, she, I didn't. She no, did it for her Tonight Show set. She it kept got it clean. A laugh. Oh, yeah, so, they laugh. Oh. and they said you're cool, and I'm like, oh. Yeah, it's like the cool aunt. But it, they offered, yeah, they offered us they the rest like, of well, their cake. They were like, you want the rest of the cake? And I did, but I couldn't bring home a 14 year old's cake. I was gonna say, yeah, I no, can't do you'll it. end up on a list. I can't bring Let's home a 14 year old's not, no, no, cake. No, 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 because the party ended right after that, and they left, and then the birthday girl was there with her. Like, I yeah. just felt bad Aww. that the guy yelled. He didn't have to. He could have. They had such said a something party. and been but nice. I, I, I'm very happy that this is the memory that they will have because. At least it didn't end with just him going. At least they had people siding yeah. with them and, and saying it's He fine. was a douchebag. And you know what? It's interesting about comedians. Like we get so beat up on for so many things and people say we're bullies and we make fun of people. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. our deal is an obsession with justice and calling out hypocrisy and unfairness. So yeah. it's like, you know, it's like even if we're like defending Trump or something and people are like, how could you do that? You're like, because you guys, that wasn't a fair, he, these are fair allegations, but this one's not. Like, yeah. we just are on the side of justice always. And that was an unfair, that was just unfair. Yeah. And just being, yeah, and, and also being obsessed. Like, whenever I see somebody just doing something because it looks like that's what works on their side of the, or, or yeah. that's what my hive says. Yeah, yeah. It just kind of annoys We're me. We're kind of, we bully the bullies. I feel like that's kind of our thing. Do you know I what I mean? That. In a weird way. Like, yeah. that's always the person I feel like we go after in, in a way. And that guy was like a bully. He was a bully because not because he spoke up or because he was annoyed because they were being a little irritating, but just the way he did it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you never would have fucking yelled at certain other people like that. Yep. And I know it, pussy, and you know it. But again, for the same reason, I couldn't yell at him. Yeah. I wouldn't scream, like I said, Chuck Zito. So I wasn't going to yell at an old guy. Yeah. I spoke to him the way I would have spoke to anybody else. And let me just ask you of just the the getting mad at people in traffic. Like, what comes up? <laughs> like, what is it? It's it's a weird. Is it primordial? Is it a wound? It's like whenever whenever I hear about a road rage shooting, uh -huh. <laughs> I always have a let's wait and see attitude. I, <laughs> <laughs> Let me see the footage. I would like to know. Yes, he shot him and his family, but how slow were they going? But what? Uh, <laughs> I mean, was there a left turn arrow or not? I want to know what happened. It, I, it, because it's such you know what it is. It's such pure narcissism when people are like cutting you off or cutting in front of you. It's such a lack of regard for that there's other people in the space. But they also know you're going to get out of the way because you don't want to get in an accident. So I have this leverage. I don't let people, like, I, I mean, I'm not going to crazy, but if we're all lining up and there's a person trying to cut in, I fucking straight ahead But he's will the same when not he flies. let them in. Whenever he travels, i just completely restless. No, but I think there's something, because I've gotten to a point where I'm kind of like, you know what? If you're in such a rush, you go for it. Yeah. You know what? gonna let you have it if you're so busy you're right that's the better way to be because you're gonna live to be 98 because your heart's not gonna stop mm -hmm. the rage just never serves me well it never it's never I'm like good. i'm texting yeah. anyway i have stuff to do yeah. <laughs> it's never helpful yeah and i think i mean maybe it's just like living in a major city like la there's yeah. always gonna be those psychos that are on adderall that just watch fast and furious that have something to prove yeah. oh it's that, like, so fascinating to me how all the housewives here and i mean the rich ones with money they're all on shrooms i love it it's so cute i didn't know that that was a very big la thing yes and and socially accepted too. Very much so. Yeah, Very LA much so, people right? are so dumb. They think that plants want what's best for you. <laughs> like that's their thing. Like they're like, weed is fine and mushrooms is fine. Yeah. And creative. It's like, you know, cocaine comes from a flower. Yeah. Like, you know, so mm. yes, there's a lot of the microdosing mushrooms is happening. Yes. yes. Uh, I actually did it a little. I had to quit. Um, I was doing it too oh. much when we were doing the roasts. All the writers oh. were mm. microdosing mushrooms. And it's what it really does is it it gives you a little more compassion. I don't think I need more compassion a lot of times, 
but um, sometimes that's my thing. I took was microdosing mushrooms and yeah. instantly started looking for the Scientology ships. Right. So it was like we had to we had to cut that yeah, out. Is that, that a new culture I was like, here? It was. I was like, I'm gonna go get the the kids off the Scientology boats and find Shelly Miscavige. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah everyone yeah, else yeah. was like, let's write jokes about Bert Kreischer. I was like, we're finding the kids. Yeah, like, yeah. We're going to Epstein Island. You're in Uber looking for Sea Org. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was just like comedian brain, not a match. But what it does is it kind of takes away that voice of like the inner critic, the inner bully. And a lot of these writers that, mm. you know, were in the writer's rooms would be like, it just like makes me like I'm not so hard on myself. And yeah. I'd be like, I got the jokes you sent in. Half the words are misspelled. Maybe you should yeah. be a little harder be on harder yourself. Be harder on yourself. Yeah. It's okay. Maybe the inner critic was serving you well. Yeah. Maybe we don't want to silence all of them because yeah. you're also three and a half hours late. You yeah. know? The inner critics can be very helpful. Yeah. And they're like, this is just so good for me. I'm like, I don't know, man. You haven't written a new joke in two years. Yeah. So <laughs> I think there's probably a place for it, but to do it right. daily all the time. Is that what the microdosing is? Is it a daily thing? Well, here's the thing. If you're do you feel high? If you're microdosing four times a day, that's a dose. That's a lot. You're on or drugs. that's normal. Yeah, three, four micro doses yeah. is a dose. <laughs> then you gotta right? do more and more. Your roast was very fun, by the way. I, I was just thinking as we were talking, how good is Robin Tran? Oh, Robin I love was Robin a fucking Tran. Force. killer. Force. Really funny. It. Went on last. What a great, great Animal. Person. Had to follow Donnell. Nobody wants, yeah. Had nobody to wants to go on last. And she was great. She she's was an great. Animal. great. She's an animal. And she took it like a warrior. Oh. Yeah, she's very funny. I just was thinking like, because she had to go on last and oh. nobody likes that at a roast because nope. every concept has been destroyed. It's mm -hmm. fucking dead. She's she a beast. Killed. I yeah. loved watching her. Oh, really great. She's such a yeah. beast. She's been a beast for so long. She's such a great joke writer. And something else I love about her is like, you know, it's like, She's trans. Like, it's easy to make fun of herself. She still plays at the top of her intelligence. Yeah. Never lazy. Never yeah. sloppy. Love it. Never kind of like, oh, I know I can make a trans joke and be trans. Is that why her name is Robin Tran? You know what? Trans? She, she has a, no, it's just, <laughs> just Asian. It's her so name. She, oh. She has this joke. Yeah. She goes, I'm such a lazy trans woman. My Gmail is still Robert Tran at Gmail. She's <laughs> <laughs> like, everyone's like in such a rush to change everything. She's like, I don't have to like call the phone company. Like, all that <laughs> She's just like so funny. She is really funny. It. So ballsy. But that's a trans person with irony. Isn't it just great to watch and not yeah. taking everything so serious? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Everything doesn't have such weight and magnitude. Yeah. And it's just... by the way, and I really wanted to have her on the roast not only because she's a an animal, yes. you know, she's been doing the roast battles forever, but also to show that like most trans people have a sense of humor about all of that. We make yeah. fun of men, we yes, make fun of women. where are they? Like, come through, please. Yeah, they're not on Twitter fighting with everybody. Yeah. So it's people like, all trans people are so uptight. And it's like, no, yeah. the cool ones aren't on Twitter yelling at everyone, trying to get people fired in, yeah. in the human resources office. They have better things to do. They have lives. They're not thinking about it. So I've it's like, never met people where the megaphone, these people who are behind this megaphone, mm -hmm. I haven't met one of them. I've only yes. I guess, seen them on Twitter. Yeah. I don't know. But trans people are no different than anybody else. No different than any other group, men, women, right. racially. It, this group, there, the, most people are fine. And yep. then there's a loud group that wants to pretend to be upset because it's empowering. And then there's a group who's legit upset. Yeah. Um, it's like when the Me Too thing. Any other group. And it's then like when, it's like people make trans an umbrella term. Which, yeah. When it's not, That's like, it's not at all an umbrella term. Like, if mm -hmm. I'm transgender, it literally means change the gender you were assigned at birth. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And now you're putting it like, in my base, where I had to go, for me, where I had to go and get a diagnosis, I had to do all this shit, and now you're just calling yourself trans? Mm. It's not that easy, you know? Yeah. I learned how to make eggs. Yeah, and egg, make egg cakes. whites for him, because he eats like he's got AIDS. It's <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> Uh, what, does, what does that mean? Who eats who eats egg whites? I mean, it's just not I mean, an, <laughs> Tom Hanks and they're awful. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly. So You're terrible. Yeah, why are you eating egg whites? I don't know. I it's just because just just it looks like cum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just throw the egg whites on my back. When they cool off, I'll eat them. <laughs> All the vitamins are in the yellow part. I know, but I'm afraid of high cholesterol for my heart. High cholesterol is not as bad for you. Is I think everybody I know. says. Are you on something for it? I, I'm a little bit of what, what a restrat, whatever it's called, a little very small a little dose. Statin, just yeah. do the Sempic. Just go all the yeah, way. Yeah, dude. Get on that. Get a tummy tuck. I don't want a tummy I'm tuck. I'm joking. 
I don't want a Zempic. <laughs> See, she has Can awful. Can we send him to that doctor in Boston? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please. Yeah, she's always got the worst suggestions just to shut me up. <laughs> just oh. slice it off. Go see doctor now. You have to lose weight. Yeah. <laughs> God, I can't. I can't. With this has been our first interview, too. This is really yeah. fun. Oh, my God. The Y'all are the best. Time. I could talk to you forever. I love it. Yeah, it's love uh, it. so I was, happy we're doing yeah, this. Yeah. Ju- it's just like, I don't know. It's really heartwarming. It's giving me so much. Um, Faith, it's like, you know, um, I'm going to out you guys for a second for being the cutest Aww. when I having a baby shower was really hard for me because it's weird to get attention around something that's not mm-hmm. being a performer. Like when you guys get married, it's going to feel weird. Yeah. Because yeah. you're kind of like, like, why is everyone so happy for me? I haven't made, you know, I haven't like earned this or something. Yeah. And when you guys came with the baby shower, it made so Aww. like oh, meant was, so much to me. It was so intimate. And everyone, I mean, my, you know, our friends are animals. Like yeah. they want nothing more than to just say horrible things about people. And they were just like, they are the cutest. And then you guys sent me the cutest little baby basket. Like, you're just such a dream. I love being at your baby shower. It was nice. It was my first baby shower ever. Oh, really? Oh, gosh. It was kind of a, mine too. It was kind of a weird, it's awkward and weird. I loved it. It was was just like. Perfect. I'm I just kidding. stood in the corner and ate. <laughs> I just stood in the corner and ate. ate. Little diaper cookies. I know. And I looked at Andrew Schultz's wife and I'm like, your husband makes so much more money than I do. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing so much better. <laughs> and she was there alone. And you were there with someone that loves you. So. He sold out the garden twice in a day. I was pretty f-ing amazing. I know. It's, it's like, it's, or in two days. It's like. Andrew Schultz? Yeah. It's uh, like guys like that, or uh, even Dane never, I thought, got the credit he deserved for what he did on social Dane. media. In terms of Dane uh, Cook, promoting, yeah. yeah. And, and when you look at what Schultz has done and like what guys are doing with it now, it's like anyone who denies that that's the best way to go is crazy. And I think for a while there, you know, you go like, oh gosh, promoting yourself. That's so lame. That's not what we do. And it's kind of like, it's a part of the job sure. now. And, you know, and it's like getting over that shame of like, yeah. no one, I think the hardest thing for me about being a comedian is when I post something not thinking, is Jim Norton going to see this and think I'm such a loser? <laughs> Every time I post something, I'm like, if Chris Rock sees yeah. this, I'm never going to be able to look him in the eye again. But like, they're not buying tickets. No. The hardest part is to stop wanting to get comedians to not make fun of your posts. Yes, mm-hmm. because we're all the same. We all want to have integrity. We all want to succeed. And by the way, Richard Pryor and George Carlin did The Tonight Show. Bill Hicks did Letterman. Like, those shows are only done to promote. And by the way, and and, and Pryor didn't go on The Tonight Show and say pussy or he, he talked according yeah. to network and so did George and so did everyone. They played the game. Everyone yeah. does. You can still have integrity and, and still be smart and promote. I mean, I remember like when I was coming up opening for comics on the road, like I um, opened for a comic who he had, he would sell out Wednesday through Sunday. He would do two shows Wednesday night, two shows Sunday. So that's, I'm an idiot with math. Is that eight shows? He would sell out eight shows. It was Craig Shoemaker. Oh, but yeah, he yeah. Would do, he'd be sold out for the year and he would do the cards. So as his opener, I would drop the cards. Yep. And it would, be, he had a mailing list and he would yeah. send out these note cards, postcards saying I'm coming. That was like the first he works, iter- yeah. iteration of it. And it really mm-hmm. worked. And I watched him show up at four o'clock, put down the pencils, yep. do the whole thing. And I thought it was cool. I thought it was impressive. But now all of a sudden, if you're talking into a phone, you're like, oh, God, I feel like such a narcissist. Like, yeah. I feel so. Because why? Why is why it's like is a mailing it list? It's a job to try. It, 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 because we all we don't mind failing. But the most humiliating thing is when people go, oh, you're trying to. Do. It's almost like I don't like to dress nice because then people go, oh, you actually think you look good, don't you? Mm. Um, and it, what's yeah. wrong with we were all trying. I'm trying to entertain you. I'm trying yeah. to make you like I'm trying to make you laugh. I'm trying to make you like me. I guess I'm a try hard. And if you're not into that, fine. You know? I wish you weren't blazer at least sometimes. <laughs> Thanks for getting the point of what we're talking uh, we'll about. See. <laughs> <laughs> That's my life. That's right there. That's us. I would love for him to dress nicer. <laughs> I, by the way, just have to share this one story that is my favorite, favorite Jim Norton story. We were at a, a premiere of, I think it was, might have been Jeff, or maybe it was like Jeff Ross's book or his special. Remember Comedy Central would have like premieres yep. for stuff, you know? And we were at some, like the Roosevelt Hotel and um, Jim Norton had put me, gave me my first like HBO spot on a show called Down and Dirty, right. which was such a big deal um, for me. And I'll never be able to thank you enough for that. And so we're kind of talking, I'm still like, it's still Jim Norton and I'm still just awkwardly like standing next to you. And an agent came up Uh, I know exactly what his name is, but I won't say it. And uh, so you just had this, you know, big series come out on HBO and the agent's like, hey, Jim, how are how are you, man? Like with that predatory. And 
you know, vibe. And Jim just went, where were you 10 years ago when I needed you? <laughs> I love it. Well, here's the great news. I need you again. <laughs> so if you're around, I'm dying. <laughs> I it was just, I was like, damn. Like, I physically, like, like, went out of frame. Like, laughing. So I've never seen, dead serious. And yep. the guy walked away and just, like, nothing yes. was, that was it. Yep. <laughs> well, that was it. He was like, just kidding, man. That was just it. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. He is my oh. Hero. Yeah, yeah. Well, and brass balls. balls. Yeah, brass balls. Yes. Well, you know. I love you so much. I so love you Nikki too. and Jim. Nikki at Nikki and Jim. Is that NYC. Nikki and Jim NYC. Yes, yeah, sorry. NYC. And when it's stuff is already starting to come up, we're already going to start posting stuff. We're on socials. You're on Instagram now. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, Ms. Nikki Norton. Uh, MS. Miss Nikki Norton. M I S M R S. M S. Oh, M -S. anything to leave the Mister out, <laughs> please. Even, see, I like this trans woman is more like oh. it's Miss, not it's Mrs. M S. That's not the pronoun. M R anything. <laughs> yeah. I had that once on my fly ticket. Oh. oh M R S. Oh. Oh my God, it's like gender dysphoria, but on paper. You're like, Mister, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> but when you're married, it's M S. Or that, that no, MS I, says no, it's no. It's Mrs. Ma so actually, I should have been a, a Mrs. You're the Mrs. The Mrs. I, I just can't do it. No, Mr. MS is, I think MS is ambiguous. It, it, Miss is single. M I S S is single. MRS is married and MS is either or. It doesn't, okay, it doesn't it, state your marital status. Okay, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I love being back up on Instagram though. It's 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 great to be back on social media because now I can finally interact with the world. Mm -hmm. So not having it, I loved it too. I love being private. I love not having any social media. Being mm -hmm. completely off the grid was great. But being back, I love it. It's fun. And that's yeah. all. I'm this is again, edge of my seat. Cannot mm -hmm. wait. I hope people like it. It's just it's just our dumb life and it's, it's fun cutesy. and some of it but some of it's real and just some of it's just Aww. us being home and this is how we interact. America's sweethearts. Well, <laughs> Aww, should we kiss for that? Uh, yes. No, but that, that's not how you do it. Can, <laughs> should we kiss for Put on a show. All right. <laughs> It's just trying too hard to be real and dignified. It's boring, you know? Just talk to the people. What are you doing? All right. <laughs> what are you doing? No, you're right. Where were you 10 years ago when he needed you? Uh, he probably wish he could have met me. <laughs> I love you guys. Thanks, Whitney. Uh, thank you so much thank for doing you. this. Nikki, 2Ks, and Jim, NYC. Cannot wait. Come back soon, please. Thank you. I love you. And I love you too. Love awkwardly. you. No ride elephants. We love you. And then you'll be on tour next year. Yes. Starting right. February. Fantastic. Love you.